Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Ranking Member. I, I apologize for coming in late, and I'm going to have to leave. We have, we're in the middle of a banking hearing in another room. Uh, but I want to thank you for your leadership and all that you've done to expand access uh, for people with disabilities. You know, before I ended up in law school, I was a special needs teacher in public school. So that's where I started my life, and this is really important. Um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about, we have made a lot of progress, because I was in this field a very long time ago, and a lot of progress in terms of access. But I wanted to talk just a little bit today about materials. This, just, just wanted to focus on that part, and I'm seeing people nod already on this. You know, the changes in technology have created such incredible opportunities now to expand access. But opportunities doesn't always mean that's in fact, what's happening. In fact, there was a 2011 federal commission that reported that colleges were adopting technologies that are not accessible and that this is creating additional problems. And so the question I wanted to start with, and I thought maybe you might be the right person for this, Ms. Myers, is why some colleges are failing to offer accessible materials even though this is what the law requires. Ms. Myers, or anyone else who wants to, but I thought Ms. Myers. Well, I think one of the difficulties is we have colleges, and this, this happens at Wright State, and it, it puts a, a responsibility on our technology center to be able to take what they've adopted and get it into an accessible format. But colleges, because of technology, are adopting more and more electronic textbooks. One of the problems with those textbooks is they are typically created and it, more of an image or graphical environment than a text environment, okay? That's not an accessible environment if you're using a screen reader or any kind of talking technology. Uh, so those then have to be turned into something that is accessible, and that's not easy to do. Um, the, the publishers are not being pushed enough to make sure that what they are creating in those electronic environments can be, it is in, in, indeed accessible. Even putting on the, the disk for it or on the download, accessible version would make things a whole lot easier for the students. Uh, it's really hard for them when they go, they purchase that, they download it, and they can't use it. Okay, so that, and I think that's one of the big problems. The, the, the faculty members are also not being pushed to check out accessibility before they adopt. Uh, to make sure that what they are adopting is indeed accessible, particularly if they're using something electronic or if they're using some kind of software program within their teaching as well to make sure that that is going to be accessible. But I think, you know, kind of there's a, there's a two-way street here. Faculty making sure that what they're adopting is accessible, but publishers making sure that what they're putting out there is accessible. Um, the burden of responsibility falls on to, it has in the past and continues, in our opinion, to fall on the, re, the university to make sure that the students have the materials that they need to be able to be successful in college. So that responsibility falls on us to make sure that what we're giving them is accessible, but the publishers aren't helping, and sometimes the faculty aren't either. Good. And, and I thought maybe I could ask, and what are the universities and the schools doing to push? But Ms. Gensel, could you, could you add to this, please? Yes. Uh, it, it, is, it is a very big di uh, difficulty, uh, especially with publishers. I know that uh, in work that we've been doing and working with the Disability Support Service Office, working with students, um, the, it's either very long to get it or they tell us it's not available um, and it, it, is, it is very difficult and we would like to see more on sort of the publisher end now with the technology. It's almost like all this technology is happening but in one sector we can't seem to get that opened up and I know that there are certain uh, regulations or, or policies, that kind of thing, especially with publishers. But I know that um, in Virginia, th at one point, they started almost like a lending library among the universities who had accessible materials that they could then, um, if you were, if you belong to this consortium, then you would have access to some of that to relieve some of the cost as well as uh, some of the waiting time. And, and again, faculty do need to be very aware of this and uh, sometimes books or, or what coursework is, is put up uh, in a short amount of time which then 
the Disability Support Services offices are scrambling to try to, to, to get that. I know that the universities, at least at VCU, is really trying to adhere very carefully to that and, and always we get things at the beginning of, uh, and the end of the semester to, to alert faculty to be uh, aware of these type of things, but it really is a difficulty. Yeah. Ms. Myers? We did some of the lending in Ohio. We established within our consortium, we're a member of the Southwest Ohio cons uh, Consortium on Higher Education, and we created a lending library. One of the problems that we had is a problem we have within our own university, is we can have two economics professors who do not adopt the same books. Mm -hmm. And when you with have that issue within your own university, having other schools adopting the same thing, when there are no standards created by the, by the state saying all history teachers have to use this, or you know, within, a, within a university, all, all economics have to do this, all sociology professors have to do this, which takes away their academic freedom, um, that's another part of the problem. We do get calls from other schools asking them what, if we've done a book to, to help them out, which we will share. Uh, we've done this for quite a while. The only problem is most of the time it's not something that we have because of that freedom that the, that the faculty has. We do use a clearinghouse called Access Text, and we can get about 60% of our materials from them. They don't include the, the small uh, publishers in that uh, process. It's, all, it's typically the large publishers. But they're also files that we cannot just hand over to a student. Uh, we have to take them. They usually are, uh, a lot of times, it's one file for the whole book, which means we have to break it up into portions that the students can use. Um, and sometimes page numbers are missing, or there's always missing information. So we still have to do something with that file before we can hand it over. So I very much appreciate your comments on this, and they're very valuable. I, I think that accessible materials are critical. Mm -hmm. We already have laws about requirements, and clearly they're not being met. So uh, today, Senator Hatch and I are introducing legislation uh, to establish guidelines, uh, to ask an independent agency to develop guidelines uh, so that we will have some guidelines for what kinds of accessible materials we need. And we're hopeful that what this means is that colleges will be able to meet their legal requirements if guidelines are out there, and that we will be able to develop a market for these materials so that the publishers, as you rightly say, Ms. Byers, uh, receive some encouragement mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that they have consistently uh, available materials mm -hmm. and that uh, we'll be able to do more. Uh, it's not enough to say to our students, we're trying to make college accessible, but when you get here, you're not going to be able to, to deal with the materials. So I just want to say this, this bill has strong support from the disability community, and on behalf of Senator Hatch, I wanted to come here today to hear from you about it and be able to mention it. And again, I apologize. I'm in a banking hearing, and I'm going to have to go back to that. But thank you for the work you're all doing, and thank you for all you've done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank appreciate you, Senator it. Warren.